All right, welcome folks to our second lecture in the Unit 3, and today we're going to talk about states of matter and phase changes. Now, we've already observed some of the phase changes in class and what kind of things happen with that. But I'm going to elaborate on that a little more, but I'm also going to talk about the different states of matter and what separates one form of matter versus another. So why don't we get started here? So first of all, what are the states of matter? Well, again, we're going to we're going to stick with the big three: solids, liquids, and gases. And what separates one form of matter from another has to do with their shape and their volume. And when we say with shape and volume, we look at the properties of those two things. Now, in a solid, you have particles packed very, very close together. When we talked about that in terms of density. And in solids, because they are packed very close together, almost shoulder to shoulder, they have a definite shape. Solids will keep their shape. But in terms of their volume, it's easily be easily measured. We can either measure it length times width times height, pi r squared, any other equations that you may use, or we can use the displacement method. But we know that solids have a definite measurable volume. Liquids, well, now we're talking particles a little bit further apart. And in the case of liquids, because they're further apart, they're not packed shoulder to shoulder, they have this ability to flow. And that's why we call liquid uh, you know, and gases as fluids, because they, they have the ability of those particles being able to move over one another. But that also means that liquids do not have any definite shape. They typically take the shape of the container that they're in. But they still are close enough to have a definite volume, and it's very easy to measure the volume of liquids using a graduated cylinder or some other type of volumetric device. The third phase, gases. Now with gases, we're talking lots of energy. Particles are moving over one another. All right, So that means that with gases, they typically do not have any definite shape or a definite measurable volume. Now, we can find the volume of gases by displacement, but it's also very difficult to find the volume of gases directly. So if you want a good example and a good picture of what separates a solid, liquid, and gas at the molecular level, click on the link at the bottom of the page before you move on to the next slide. Now, other states of matter. Now, we, we concentrate on solids, liquids, and gases because they're the most common on Earth. But there are other phases, one of them being plasma, the other one being the Bose-Einstein condensate. Now, plasma typically exists at very high temperatures. And there are some examples of plasma on Earth. If you've seen been in a lightning storm, and when you see lightning, you're seeing an example of plasma. And it's essentially a gas with a charge, with nuclei and electrons that we'll talk a little bit more about in class. The other type is a relatively new phase of matter that's been discovered within the past 100 years is something called the Bose-Einstein condensate. And this is matter that exists only at very low temperatures. And we're talking very close to zero Kelvin. And at that temperature, we have groups of atoms that act as one particle and act differently than other phases when matter gets that cold. But again, we will talk about that a little bit more in class. Now, when matter undergoes a phase change, we say that it changes from one physical state to another. Remember, folks, this means that we are not changing anything chemically. So when I take water and I boil it to steam or I freeze it to ice, it still has the same chemical structure of H2O. Now, we say that phase changes usually require heat, either me adding heat or removing heat in order for that phase change to occur. But we can also influence phase changes by pressure, which we'll talk about later on uh, in this chapter, and that how we can compress gases or liquids uh, into another phase. So we can compress a gas to a liquid, we can compress a liquid to a solid, or you can compress a gas into a solid, depending on what matter you have and, and how much pressure we are applying. So we normally think of it as heat, and you can change phase by heat, but you can also influence it with pressure. But again, it mainly deals with gases and liquids. Well, you know, it's that point in our notes here, so why don't we take a brain break here and figure out, you know, take a stand, maybe move our arms around, maybe do some jumping jacks, push-ups, whatever you got to do to get your blood flowing. And today's Chuck Norris fact of the day is that Chuck Norris can pick oranges from an apple tree and make the best lemonade you've ever tasted. I know you love that one. 
All right, moving on here. So now that we know about phase changes, what are the fa main phase changes that have? Well, we have six main phase changes. Now, we have liquefaction, solidification, condensation, vaporization, sublimation, and deposition. So when we look at these phase changes, the first one we've already discussed briefly, and that has to do with liquefaction. Now, we normally think of liquefaction as being melting, and it wouldn't be incorrect to say that it is melting. But the more technical term in this case would be liquefaction, because essentially what you're doing is you are liquefying a solid, or you're adding heat to that solid to go into the liquid phase. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add something here. So when we look at liquefaction, in order for us to liquefy something, we have to add heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a plus sign there to indicate that we need to add heat in order to liquefy or melt a solid into a liquid. The opposite end of that is solidification. We commonly think of as freezing. We take a liquid and we convert it into a solid. And for most matter, we have to remove heat in order for that to occur. So I'm going to put in minus H here. Now, keep in mind, folks, these two phase changes occur at the same temperature. So that when we look at water, water liquefies and freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So it's the same temperature that these two phase changes occur, the difference being whether we're adding heat or we are removing heat. In fact, let me clean this up here a little bit, make it stand out some more. So I'm going to erase this here and we're going to put this in another color. So I'm going to say we're going to put this at zero degrees Celsius. Now, the other types of phase changes we have here, we have condensation, and that doesn't, that's the same name we keep there, and that's when a gas or a vapor condenses down into a liquid, and in order for that to occur, we need to be able to remove heat, heat take heat away. The opposite end of condensation is what we call vaporization. Now, vaporization has two different types of vapor, vaporizing, going from the liquid phase into the gas or vapor phase. We have evaporation or boiling, and they both require heat. And I'm going to put a plus H here to say that they both require heat. The difference being, though, is evaporation happens below the boiling point, the temperature like for water, which is 100 degrees. So you know that if you have a cup of water sitting out on a table, even though it's not even close to 100 degrees, eventually that water will evaporate out. Boiling, on the other hand, happens at the boiling point. So for water, which is 100 degrees, we know that when I heat it up to 100 degrees, it's going to boil. It's going to go into the gas or vapor phase. And going back here with condensation for water, that happens at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, the other two types that you may or may not be familiar with are sublimation and deposition. And sublimation is when a solid converts to a gas or a vapor. And deposition is where a gas or a vapor converts right into a solid. Now, sublimation, we need to be able to add heat in order for that to occur. And being that you're watching this probably the night before Halloween, you might see me see some examples of sublimation. If somebody uses dry ice to produce gas, well, dry ice undergoes sublimation it skips the liquid phase altogether. So if you take dry ice, you're going to see it's going to turn right into carbon dioxide vapor. And deposition is just the opposite. We remove heat from a gas or a vapor, and we produce a solid. And that's typically how uh, dry ice is made, is going through the process of deposition. Another example of sublimation you may, may or may not be familiar with is mothballs. And mothballs is a chemical made called naphthalene, which goes right from the solid phase to the vapor phase. So those are the different phase changes. Just keep in mind, they happen at the same temperatures, all right, for each of the phase changes. It just has to do if whether we're adding heat or we are removing heat. Now, 
how can I tell if a phase change is occurring? Well, you've already seen one thing in our lab is that's just observing the change in physical state. When you melted the ice, when you boiled the water, you saw it happening. So you then made just a simple observation, a qualitative observation. See what's going on. Is there water in the ice? Is the water boiling? Do I see steam coming off? That's a good way to indicate how a phase change has occurred. The other way is to look at temperature. Remember that when matter undergoes a phase change, temperature remains the same. So for melting point at the temperature where solid goes to a liquid, I know that when I heat up ice, it's going to stay at zero degrees. Oops, I made a little error here, so let's clear that out. We know that ice is going to stay at zero degrees Celsius until all of it has melted to water. But if I take that water and remove heat, it's going to stay at zero degrees Celsius until it's converted to ice. And that's not just for water, that's for any phase. It's just going to have its own unique melting point and freezing point. Boiling point and condensation point for water, again, 100 degrees. It's going to stay at that temperature until all of that liquid has converted to a gas or vapor or where a gas or vapor has been converted to a liquid. So if you have a thermometer or a temperature probe, you can look and see the temperature staying the same, and you know a phase change is occurring. And then the next way is to look at a temperature versus time graph. And you made this in your effect of heat on the melting point of ice or the melting of ice. And that's going to be the next two slides here that we're going to go over in class tomorrow. But basically what you look for is you look for plateaus. You look for the flat points in the graph to help you indicate where that phase change is occurring. So that's what we're taking a look here at phase changes. We'll talk a little bit more about class tomorrow. But if you have any questions, make sure you ask tomorrow and I will have a good evening.